I'm not even going to pretend that I will adequately cover this topic. But I do want to look today, Thursday, at baptism, and tomorrow, Lord willing, on the Lord's Supper. I want us to consider baptism today. In Matthew chapter 3, we're told about John the Baptist, who is in the wilderness preaching and teaching repentance. A bunch of Pharisees and such came forth, and they wanted to be baptized mockingly. And John said, not unless you're, you're repentant, a bunch of vipers. Uh, but, um, but he has some prerequisites for scriptural baptism. And I want us to consider baptism very quickly today. Uh, number one, I do want us to consider those prerequisites for a scriptural baptism because it does matter. The Lord has given the ordinances to the church to protect. Therefore, there are some things that are sacred about it um, and that we are not to take lightly, one of which is a proper candidate. Again, that has to be a believer. That is the only ones who are baptized in the New Testament. There are people in Matthew 3 and verse 6 that confess their sins. There are people in Matthew chapter 3 verse 8 who had fruits of their conversion. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 41, they that gladly received his word. In Acts chapter number 8, it was he who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter number 9, Paul uh, was saved and then baptized. In Acts chapter number 10, uh, Cornelius got saved and then baptized. In Acts chapter 16, Lydia got saved and then was baptized. The Philippian jailer was saved and then baptized. I could go on, but the fact is this, that the only New Testament examples of scriptural candidates for baptism are those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I do not believe there has to be a long period of time between that, as many that I just read to you did not have a long period of time. They believed, and they made a choice to follow him in baptism. I do believe there needs to be an understanding of what baptism is, uh, but it is a proper candidate as someone who is saved. Um, it is a proper New Testament order. Uh, the Bible teaches us about the Great Commission to go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 4, the disciples made and were made and then were baptized. In Acts 2 and verse number 38, they repented and then they were baptized. In Acts 2 and verse 41, they received the word of God and they were baptized. The bottom line is this, that there must be a proper candidate and then there has to be a proper act, and that is immersion. Uh, there are some who teach that you can sprinkle water upon someone to be baptized. That's not in the Bible. Uh, you can pour water on someone's head. That's not in the Bible. Uh, it is complete immersion. Uh, the Bible teaches that uh, John baptized in the Jordan River. There's a reason why he was in the river. In Matthew chapter number 3, the Bible says that they went down into the water and out of it. In John chapter 3, and verse 23, John baptized in a place in the Jordan River where he was because, quote, there was much water there. In Acts chapter number 8, they, when an Ethiopian was baptized, he went down into the water and up out of the water. Uh, the word immersion means to, to dip or to plunge. It is a symbolism of the burial of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, throughout church history, a proper baptism is one of complete immersion. Uh, that is what is taught in the Word of God. But you also need a proper motive, and that is that it is a symbol. Uh, again, baptism doesn't wash sins away. It is just a symbol of what we have believed in, how that we are identifying with Christ, and we're pledging our allegiance to Christ. And we're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. But there must also be a proper authority, a proper authority, and that, of course, is the local church. Um Again, um, with the Lord's Supper, there's open, close, and closed. And, uh, you know, where do we take a stand on our baptism? I take a stand on baptism the same way I take a stand on the Lord's table. I'm very closed on that. Uh, with the idea, though, uh, that it is only for a scriptural New Testament church. Why do I say that? Because the Great Commission was given to the local church in Matthew chapter number 28. It wasn't given to the apostles because they died, and it would have died with them. It wasn't given to an individual. It was given to the church, and, uh, and there's great importance in that. Uh, Jesus himself, when he was baptized, he walked 60 miles to get to where John was because John was a man sent from heaven with authority, and that's what all the disciples did. Uh, Philip was sent with authority to baptize. Paul and Barnabas were sent by the local church with the authority to baptize. It is a church ordinance. 
that is the door to church membership. And God gets glory in the church. So that proper authority does matter. And so I encourage you, if you've not been baptized scripturally by a New Testament church, that you do so immediately if you're a believer. Um, and that church has to have an authority. And there should be a, a line, a uh, torch, if you will, that's been passed down since Christ. And um, again, authority matters. And baptism is of great importance.